Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today I'm gonna be doing my June wrap-up. YouTube is a wild place <laughs> because yesterday my favorite booktuber, Books and Lala, featured me in her video and I'm still not over it and I'm just gonna fangirl forever and yeah, I just had to mention that at the beginning of this because I still can't get over it. Let's continue with the wrap-up. <laughs> In the month of June, I read a total of 13 books, which amounted to 4,242 pages. It was my best reading month yet in terms of how many books I was able to read during the month, and it's mostly thanks to Romance-a-thon because I read six books during Romance-a-thon. As far as checking in on my goals that I set for myself for 2019, I did complete my reading one of my book of the month selections. I actually read two of my book of the month selections for June, but then checking in on my reread goal, I didn't actually get a chance to get to my reread this month, which is disappointing, but there was just so much going on this month. Like it was just crazy. As far as genres go, I read seven romance novels two sci-fi novels, one non-fiction, one thriller, and two contemporary slash literary fiction novels. As far as my ratings go, I gave two books five stars, six books four stars, three books three stars, and two books two stars. It was at the higher end of the ratings for this month, which is good. And then male versus female authors, I read four male authors this month, eight female authors, and one author that identifies as non-binary. So that's first. All right, so the first book I managed to read this month is The Wedding Party by Jasmine Gilroy. This one is an arc that goes on sale July 16th, and this one is a romance novel. I will say that I wasn't a huge fan of the book The Proposal that she came out with last year. I read it and I think I gave that one two stars, but I was still really looking forward to this one because it sounded cute because this one says it's like a hate to love romance and it involves a wedding. This book ended up just being okay. Like I didn't really feel any chemistry between the two main characters and for a hate to love romance, like this is a very, very, mild hate to love romance like there's no like real like banter totally forgettable you know this was all right i ended up giving it three stars it's just i just don't think i click with this author's writing i think that's what it is all right the second book i picked up this month is ask again yes by mary beth keen and this was one of my book of the month selections for the month of June. And this one is a contemporary slash literary fiction novel that follows these two families over a period of many, many decades. This book really centers on this tragedy that happens between these two families. And then the story kind of talks about how this tragedy affected all the lives of both families and this book really fleshes out every single character and i love how this author wrote every character with such sensitivity because i feel like that's just so important with a topic like this but this one is definitely like a heavier book and the fact that it just revolves around these families like i just found myself caring so much about every single character because of the way it was written it was just so gorgeously written this book really explores human relationships and how human relationships can be very complicated and messy and not always perfect but it really makes you question like how much can you forgive and yeah i don't know i just feel like fans of like little fires everywhere and like really character driven novels like that would really enjoy this one so yeah i ended up giving this one 4.5 out of 5 stars like i rounded it up to five it was just a really really gorgeous story and i just like oh I just loved it so much. Right, the next book I read this month was Recursion by Blake Crouch, and this was my other June book of the month selection. And this novel, oh my gosh, you guys, this was one of my most anticipated books of the year because Blake Crouch wrote Dark Matter, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And this is his latest novel. It's a sci-fi kind of thriller-ish novel. So fascinating what this book is about because it's basically like about our memories and how our memories make us who we are. In this book, there's this thing going around called FMS, which means false memory syndrome. And these people are experiencing memories that never happened and they don't know why and so they're experiencing memories of like this child that they never had and like it feels so real to them that they don't know what's real anymore and what's this false memory and that's kind of where this book takes off and i think what i like the most about this book is that 
it falls from two different points of view. So it falls from Barry, who's this cop who's trying to figure out what's going on with this. And then it also falls from Helena, who's a scientist who's kind of behind what's going on with all of this. So I really like that this book kind of feels like it's half thriller with Barry's chapters as a cop. And then it feels half sci-fi with Helena's chapters as a scientist. This book is divided into five different books. And so I feel like the first two books in this are just freaking spectacular, mind-blowing, like I could not put it down, my brain was just like reeling. As we started to get closer towards the end, I started to get like a little bit confused and overwhelmed and I feel like the story got a little bit too repetitive for my personal taste at the end, especially in book five. Like by book five, I found myself wanting to like skim a little bit because I was like, oh my gosh, here we go again. It's the same freaking thing. But like, oh my God, you guys, his writing is so beautiful. And like the quotes about like memories in this book and how our memories make us who we are, are just so thought provoking and gorgeous and like, Oh my god! But I ended up giving this one 4 out of 5 stars and that's like a really high 4 out of 5 stars because I really did love this book but there were just a few things that I had issues with it so I couldn't really rate it higher than that but I still really really enjoyed this one and I would highly recommend it still. It's fantastic! Right, the fourth book I read this month is The Test by Sylvain Nuevel. This one is a short story. It's like less than 100 pages. I actually listened to the audiobook for this. This is the author of Sleeping Giants, which is my favorite sci-fi series. And dude, this book felt more like Black Mirror than season five of Black Mirror did, okay? <laughs> the main question that this book is presenting is how do you value a life when all you have is multiple choice? I don't know, it kind of gave me the same vibes too as like The Cabin at the End of the World. It's just like one of those books that are really like hard to read, but they're just impossible to put down because you're just like what? It's like watching a train wreck before your eyes. You just like have to know what's gonna happen. So yeah, I ended up giving this one four out of five stars as well. Really, really, really love this one. All right, the fifth book that I read this month is Miss Everything by Jennifer Weiner. This is a really, really gorgeous story about sisters and motherhood and feminism. This story follows these two sisters, Joe and Bethy, back and forth in different chapters from when they're in their early childhood in like the 1950s and then all the way through the rest of their lives basically. So Joe is a struggling to be accepted lesbian and she wants to be a writer and she really cares about equality and feminism and she just doesn't know what to do about these things. Like she just wants to go out there and like change the world. And then Bethy is a young, strong girl who should have been famous. And I will warn you in advance that this book has a lot of trigger warnings for some very heavy things like homophobia, rape, sexual abuse, that's mental and physical, um, sexism and eating disorders, and pretty much anything you can think of is talked about in this book. But I do feel like every woman out there can relate to some aspect of this book, which is, I think, what makes this book so powerful. And it's, like, by far one of the most feminist things I've ever read, or at least it made me feel the most empowered. Like, I just related so much to Joe's character of, like, wanting to go out there and change the world and just, like, shout it from the rooftops, you know? <laughs> I feel like this book especially shines a light on mother and daughter relationships and how complicated they can be when a mother puts very high expectations on their daughters. But yeah, I just had a really great time reading this book and it was just so freaking beautiful and so important and just freaking amazing. So I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. It was a great time. <laughs> all right, so the next six books that I read were all the books that I read for Romance-a-thon. So I'm not gonna talk about them in too much depth in this because I talked about them in a lot of depth in my Romance-a-thon vlogs. So I'll link my Romance-a-thon vlogs down below so you can see that if you want to hear more of my thoughts about any of these books. The sixth book I read this month was The Friend Zone. The thing I loved about this book is the romance itself. I really enjoyed Kristen and Josh's romance. It felt very like bantery and just like really cute. And I love the fact that Josh is like a fireman and he's just so soft. And I love Kristen's like not giving a fuck attitude about anything. Like I related to her a lot in that sense. But I did have a lot of different issues with this book. 
Some of them I can't get into without spoiling you. One thing that did piss me off though is Josh's like obsession with referring to Kristen as like this cool girl. He would just constantly have all these quotes like, she's not like the other girls. She just wants to eat hot wings and drink beer with the guys and just be like a cool girl. He just kept constantly comparing her to like other women to describe like how cool she is. Like she's just so much better than all the other girls and like, it's 2019, like, I'm just so done with that bullshit. Like, can we not put other women down just to describe how amazing one girl is? Like, you know, so that kind of drove me up the wall. And then another part of this book that really irritated the hell out of me the most was the end of this book, because I feel like the ending of this book is just really harmful to anyone that's actually experienced infertility or is currently experiencing infertility. Yeah, I can't get into this without spoiling you, but I was just really not a fan of the way that this book ended. I'll put a link in the description for my full review on Goodreads if you do want to see some more spoilery chatting about this book, but yeah, I was not a fan. I ended up giving this book two stars. The next book I read this month was On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves. This one was our buddy read for Romance-a-thon, and this one is a very forbidden romance that follows this 30-year-old woman named Anna and a 16-year-old boy named TJ who are on this plane that crashes onto this island, and they're the only two survivors. Just in case you were wondering, nothing romantic happens between them until TJ is well over 18, over the age of consent. For some reason, I never got emotionally attached to the characters, but this book was just so interesting because of their situation that I just had to continue reading, and it definitely like kept me hooked and kept me interested. I couldn't put it down, which is a good sign to me, but I just, I don't know why, I just personally never super super cared about their relationship or I never like super got attached to the characters but I don't know so I ended up giving this one four out of five stars eighth book I read this month is a five minute life by Emma Scott and this one is a romance novel that follows this girl Thea who is involved in this really really bad car accident and now she has like one of the worst cases of amnesia in the world because she only has a five minute long memory span before she resets and then it also follows Jim Whelan who's this guy who's now gonna be working at the facility where Thea is a resident and he grew up in the foster care system and he has a stutter. This book is honestly like 50 first dates, like the movie, but it's a lot more serious, I feel like. I was so excited to read this one because of that premise alone. And this book is also divided into like three different parts. And I will say, I think part one of this book is the best part of this book. Like, I felt like part one was worthy of like five stars. Like, I absolutely was loving the holy shit out of it. But then as we got to part two and three, the story just went somewhere where I, that I wasn't really expecting it to go. And it got very, very cheesy for me. And I like stopped caring about the characters completely. So I ended up being a little bit disappointed with this one, which sucks because I love this author so much. Like I love all of her other books that I've read. I ended up giving this one three out of five stars and it made me sad because I wanted to love the shit out of this one. The ninth book I read this month is Top Secret by Serena Bowen and Elle Kennedy. And this one is their newest male male romance. Um, if you didn't know, these two authors wrote my all time favorite male male romance, Him. So I was highly, highly anticipating this book. And this book follows these two guys, Keaton and Luke, who are both living in this frat house on their campus and they're both competing against each other to become the frat president. Basically what's going on in this book is that Keaton doesn't know that he's anonymously talking to Luke online and they start to like fall for each other and catch feels before he realizes who he is and then it's like one of those things where after they realize who each other are it's already too late because they've already caught feels for each other oh my god it's like my new favorite thing ever <laughs> like it almost kind of reminds me of carry on and like simon and baz vibes because of the fact that they're kind of roommates like in this frat house so it's like they have all these feels for each other but they're roommates so they can't like act on it at least not right away you know because <laughs> they're living in this frat house with all these guys together. Oh my god, I just love these characters so much. And like Luke is, 
Luke is so precious. Like he's one of my new favorite male characters of all time. And I just felt so bad for like both of their family situations. Like Luke's family is like completely fucking psycho. And then Keaton's family just has such high expectations on him. Like they expect him to go into the family business and he just wants to study like marine biology. Oh my God, I just loved this book so much. I give it five stars and it's probably maybe my favorite thing that I read this month. <laughs> So yeah. The 10th book that I read this month was Waiting for Tom Hanks by Carrie Winfrey. It's a romance novel that's about this girl who is a screenwriter and she's absolutely freaking obsessed with like romantic comedy movies, especially those that feature Tom Hanks. But she gets the opportunity to go and work on this movie set where this super huge actor, Drew Danforth, is starring in the movie and she like thinks that she's gonna hate him because he's like cocky and annoying and rich and famous. Yeah, I don't think this book is really for me. I mean, I know I do typically enjoy books that feature like actors, you know, like, but oh my god, like this character in particular was just really annoying, like really cocky. And Annie Cassidy, the main character in this book, drove me fucking nuts. She genuinely believed that her life was going to be a romantic comedy and she would settle for nothing less and she was going to have her own meet cute. She was just so juvenile and like she literally thought like her own life was going to be a romantic comedy and it was just really frustrating. So I ended up giving this book two out of five stars. It just wasn't really for me. Did not enjoy. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend. All right, the next book I read this month is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This was the last book that I read for Romanceathon. This one is a young adult novel that features a non-binary main character, which is so cool. And I've never read about something like this before, which made it a very eye-opening experience for me. So this book follows Ben, who has recently come out as non-binary to their parents and their parents kick them out and so they have to go and live with their sister hannah and hannah is honestly my favorite character in this book like she is just so cool and so sweet and so nice <laughs> and then this book follows ben as they discover their love interest nathan i will admit like i didn't like super connect with it like i felt like the writing was very basic ya writing and if it didn't have a non-binary main character then i feel like i definitely would have dnf this book and not really cared about it but because of my interest in that aspect alone i did finish this book and i was still interested in reading it but i ended up giving this one three out of five stars just because the writing just wasn't the best it was just okay but i still really enjoyed reading this book just because it did teach me a lot about what it means to identify as non-binary i do think it's important that books like this continue to get published you know because like there's no, there's like barely any books out there with non-binary characters so i think it's really cool that it got published 12th book that i read this month is naturally tan by tan france thank you so much to book sparks for a copy of this book if you didn't know queer eye is like one of my favorite shows tan france is absolutely adorable and i just adore him on queer eye so much and i loved getting to read this book because this is obviously like a non-fiction book it's like a it's like a memoir it was actually very hard to read this book because of all the hate he experienced in his childhood just because of the color of his skin but then i also loved getting more insight into like his marriage with his husband and like how they met it was so cute and getting to see his like experience of getting casted onto queer eye and like how he met the other guys and like how they just bonded so quickly like i just think it's so cute not to mention too this book is gorgeous like look at these end papers and then there's drawings in this book too like almost every chapter has like a bunch of like little drawings and it's just like so cute and i ended up giving this one four to five stars the only reason why i didn't give it a full five stars is because there was a lot of discussion about fashion in this book which i know is obvious because tan saying is fashion but I'm personally like really not interested in fashion, so I found myself getting kind of bored with like the lengthy fashion discussion in this. All right, so the last book, book number 13 that I read this month is 13 by Steve Kavana. <laughs> I know I didn't plan for this to be the 13th book that I read this month, but that is the way that it played out. This is an arc that I received from Flatiron Books. This book goes on sale in August. This is technically the fourth or third book in a series, but it can be read as a standalone. This one is a legal thriller, which I didn't realize going into it. And I was kind of like nervous about it as soon as I opened it because I was like, shoot. I don't usually tend to like legal crime thrillers. 
but this book is interesting because it follows from the point of view of a serial killer who is not on the trial, but he's on the jury. So that right away was like, what? We follow from the point of view of the serial killer, but then in alternate chapters, we follow from the point of view of this lawyer who is gonna be working this case of like this movie star who is getting accused of murdering his wife and his head of security. I loved getting to follow the point of view of the serial killer and then getting the lawyer's point of view because I feel like if this book was told entirely in the lawyer in the lawyer's point of view, I would have like not been able to finish it because like I'm just not very interested in legal thrillers and stuff. I'm just I'm also not a fan of books that mostly take place in a courtroom or like a court setting and just have a lot of very lawyer-y discussion. But I will say that I actually really Really enjoyed this book and it did take me some time to get into this like I didn't really get invested in this book until almost like 150 pages into it but then once it took off like it really took off and there were so many plot twists towards the end that I did not see coming at all the ending of this just got so intense because this serial killer character is just so crazy he reminds me of a lot of like my favorite villainy characters of all time like Hannibal Lecter and like he reminded me a lot of like Harvey Dent actually with his like flipping a coin like he tends to like flip a coin to see if somebody should live or die or whatever it's very like Harvey Dent vibes from the Dark Knight but yeah I was just genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed this book in the end and I love the fact that this title 13 has so much like symbolism in the story like there are so many references to the number 13 in here which I think is just so cool. I was surprised how much I liked this book and I ended up giving it four to five stars and I definitely would recommend it even though I'm not a huge fan of legal thrillers. I think this one was fantastic and the writing was just very clever and very smart and the characters were very smart. All right so those are all of the books that I read in the month of June. <laughs> that was a lot of reading this month. I gotta say like Romancethon definitely encouraged me to read a lot more than I would have otherwise. This was the very first month of me hosting my first readathon ever, which was really exciting and really fun. And I read the most books I've ever read during a readathon. Like I read six books, like that's an all time record for me. Let me know what, how many books did you guys read in June? What was the best book that you read in June? What was your least favorite book that you read in June? It's so crazy. Cause like I read so many great books in June, but I only rated two of them five stars. And that was Ask Again Yes and Top Secret. So I do think that these were my favorite books that I read this month. I feel like for sure, like Recursion and Miss Everything are books that are going to stay with me for so long. Like I just loved both of them so much. Yeah, that is all for this video. So let me know all the deets down below of what you read in June. And thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I will see you guys soon with a new video.